Hi everyone, this is Richard. Let's go over the camera package. Every mobile device has a camera, right? At least one, usually two, sometimes these days even more. So there's a front and a back for most mobile devices. Sometimes there's just one, but every mobile device has one at least, right? I'm not sure, I don't know of a single one that doesn't have a single camera. So this is gonna be important. However, camera is difficult. Um, again, I hate to say this, but it's the documentation. It's not very clear on a lot of things. And there's a lot of things that I'm trying to do that I just can't figure out how to do. However, since this is my learning experiences, all I'm gonna do is document what I do know, and then maybe in the future, I can come back and learn about something like this. And if anybody has any ideas, um, any references that it's we can build upon, please leave a comment in the comment section. So far, you guys have been great about correcting me when I'm wrong, clarifying things when I'm not very clear about them, um, and helping everybody else. So for everybody, you know, leave, read the comments also, because many times there's valuable information there as well. Okay? So in Flutter, there are basically two packages that use the camera. So there's image picker and then there's camera. Image picker will do in the future. What's the difference? It's, I, I couldn't get the exact difference between them, but from looking at this, it looks like image picker is an actual bare bones skeleton of a camera application. <clears throat> in other words, the bare bones look like this. You can actually see the camera, take pictures, and go from there, right? So that's what the, the um, image picker is. But the question, of course, is, well, why would I want a bare bones camera application? Well, let's just say, for example, <clears throat> you're trying to make an application that you take pictures of people and you change their eyes to blue. Okay, so you have a dog and you're taking a picture of your dog and you want to change the eyes to blue. What you could do is take a picture, save it, import it into a new application and change your dog's eyes to blue, right? But what if you don't want to do that? What if you what you want to do is just have it in one seamless application? You click on the icon right inside of here, it opens up a camera, you take a picture, in the same application it adds blue eyes to your dog and in the same application you can then save it, right? So that would be preferable in some ways. That's where image picker comes in. So that's what that would be. It's an actual camera app. Now, what's the camera package then? Well, the camera package seems to be, you know those applications that you use the camera, but not for actually taking pictures? Um, the best example I can think of is when you have like a barcode scanner, like, or, or a QR code scanner. You know, when you go to the store, there's this barcode and you scan it with your smartphone and it'll tell you the product and the price and maybe some other information. So you're using the camera, but you're not actually using a camera app, right? You're not pointing and shooting and taking a picture or anything like that, but you're using that as a form of input. And that's where this camera app, I mean package, comes in. So if you wanna actually take pictures, use the image picker. If you wanna use the camera for some other purpose, this is camera, okay? And that's what's important, because I tried to do other things with them and it wasn't working out so well. I think that that's the difference between the two, all right? Notice that they're very young, um, young in terms of development, so 0 0.2.8 and this one 0 0.4.10. They're, they're not d done yet, but at the same time, how they will continue to evolve, I really don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So for right now, we're going to go over the camera app. This is both going to be very simple and also very complicated at the same time. Very complicated in the sense that there's a lot of aspects about this that I just don't know, I don't understand. So what I'm trying to do is just document what I do know, and then maybe I can add on to it or do something else in the future to build upon that. It's very simple in the fact that since I don't know a heck of a lot, it's pretty easy to make a good video, right? Well, I didn't say good. I make a video on this, right? So it's just documenting what I do know, and that's what's important. So a few things. Before we begin, the things that slowed me down is, let me go ahead and start just run this particular application. And what we have to do is pubspec.yaml. I'm gonna import both the camera and the image picker. Hit package get, and I'm gonna go to main.dart. And for this one, I'm just going to import the camera, okay? Now, originally, when I ran this, I ran into this. And then I had to track this down because I couldn't figure it. It says requires SDK version 26, current version is 24. 
Error launching application on Android SDK built for x86. Couldn't figure that out for the longest time. So I went to Android SRC, app SRC, build Gradle, and it says compile version 27, min SDK version 26, and I couldn't figure out what was what it was talking about. What it's talking about is the SDK it's talking about is in the emulator. Okay, so it's in the emulator itself, SDK version. Remember when we, I'm going to close this down. We went through tools, Android, AVD manager, and we cre created a virtual device right here. Well, we created something based upon NuGet. And so this is API 24. We need 26 or higher. So create device, go through. We created NuGet before. Let's create one with Oreo 26 or above. Okay, but hang on a second. Something's fishy. Why does it say here that min SDK version is 21? I actually don't know the answer to that. Maybe this is outdated, the, the documentation, but this is one of the problems with documentation, right? It's If it's wrong, why is it wrong? Why am I getting this error? I don't know. I had to figure that one out. I'm, I think I've gotten it right, though. So when we create this one, though, we're going to use the camera. For me, I'm going to set the webcam up front and the virtual scene in back. So virtual scene is, it's an environment where you can look around inside of there. Emulated is just like a picture. Um, webcam, if you have a webcam, you can use that on your emulator as a emulating your front camera. So you can take selfies or something like that, okay? So once we get that, then let's run that one, API 26 or above. And let's go ahead and run this right here. <clears throat> We're going to have to import async. Okay, if you hit Alt, you can actually move around and look around. So it's an environment. So, you know, you can use a video, make a video on this and stuff like that. And if you think, hey, I'm going to get call for the cameras and get the information back. There's going to be obviously a little latency right with that, right? It's not going to happen instantly. You're going to wait a little bit, wait for the Android operating system to send me information. So then we're going to have to say, okay, fine, great. Get me that information back, but that's going to be a waiting game. So that's going to have to be a future and async, right? By the way, don't forget to read the installation on the camera plugin because if you have iOS, there is some more stuff that you have to do before it actually works. So we're going to make a list of cameras that's above outside of the main, a list of cameras. Just say, hey, what cameras do I actually have on my system itself? That's all I need. So cameras, I'm going to await available cameras. So available cameras tell me what cameras that are available on this system and I can go from there. So it's a list. So I can zero, I think by default zero is the back camera because that's the main camera, the most powerful, right? One is the front camera. Beyond that, I don't really know. We'll have to play around with it a little bit more if we have more cameras. This should look familiar. This is the same old thing, only camera app. Floating action button, I was going to put something there. I decided not to. And if you think about taking a picture, what's going to happen? You're going to have one state when you're not going to take a picture and the next state where you're going to take a picture, right? So it's going to be stateful, right? So we have at least two states. You might take three pictures. You may take more pictures. It's going to be at least two states. So it's going to have to be stateful, right? So let's go ahead and create that. And then camera controller. Okay, so when you have a controller, in my mind, it doesn't mean the same thing across the board. Because remember in previous videos, I would say like um, with animation, animation controller, it's like animation is the object. Um, the animation controller is like the verb or something like that. I can't remember what exactly said. But in this particular situation, the cameras is simply a list, a list of all available cameras. The camera controller is the actual con camera you want to, to want to control. So it's an virtual, it's an instantiation of that actual camera you want to control. Okay, so we're going to have to init state and then we're going to have to initialize the controller itself. Well, first of all, identify, initialize here, um, camera controller. It's going to be, cam these are the parameters. It's going to be cameras zero. So it's going to be the back camera by default, right? 
and then there's going to be a resolution preset medium. All right, so actually hang on one second. Zero. Yeah, it's going to be the back camera, so it's going to be the virtual scene. And you could do this low, medium, high. This is just the resolution of the screen right inside of here. All right, so controller equals the actual camera zero, the, back's cam the back camera, with these characteristics. Then we get that camera, the controller, initialize it. Then if it's not mounted, you just return. So it just waits until it initializes, and then we're good to go. And then we'll just set the state. We're not going to do anything at this point in time, but we just have to set the state, set state because it's a stateful widget, right? If you don't have something like this, if it initializes, it's going to crash because it, it's going to have a null value to the controller itself. So what you're going to have to do is you have to wait till it initializes, then you're good to continue on from there on. All right, and that's super important. It's something simple, but just to keep that in mind, you don't want to have the value of null at any given time. Then we're going to, oh, by the way, I don't know if I've gone through this before. I think I have, but I'll go over it one more time because I frequently forget this. Anytime you have a state, you want the void dispose. Why? Well, because remember what is happening with the state. With the state, what you're doing is you're getting some information and storing it in memory because that's what separates a state from a stateful from a stateless object uh, widget. We have to actually store some information in memory. When you close down the widget or the application, you're going to get rid of that memory itself. If you don't and it stays in memory, it's what we call a memory leak. So you keep at storing things in memory that you're never going to use anyway because the application is all closed or the widget's gone away actually. And if that's the case, you're using all this memory up and it slows the system down. So unless there's some strange reason why you don't want to close this widget, I'm sorry, you don't want to close this controller itself, always put this inside of there, okay? Now, you might think, well, what if I'm like, for example, playing a video game? If I'm playing a video game and I stop the video game and I come back to start the video game, I want to be in the same position that I was when I stopped it, right? So maybe I shouldn't have this I should delete this, right? Well, no, because you, what you, it's a different way. So what you would want to do is you want to, want to get your position, save it on the SSD, on the drive, permanently, and then next time you open it up, it'll read that information and then determine what the state is at that time, right? Because that would be a better way. Because if you just store it inside of there, that would be bad because you're kind of using up a lot of memory. But if you turn the reboot the whole phone, you turn it off, you turn it back on, that information is going to be gone anyway, right? So, so why you would not want this here and keep it open, it's, I'm not exactly sure there's, I'm sure there's some applications that you want that open at all times for some strange reason. Maybe if you're, you know, for Wi-Fi or something like that, you'll want that in the actual memory, but I don't know, but always keep it there, okay? Um, and then we build the widget in and of itself. If the controller.value, so if that particular camera is not initialized, right? Not, is initialized, is not, then just return the container, return an empty container. Once it becomes initialized, we'll return the camera preview, okay? So a view of the camera, the screen of the camera, which camera? The controller. That's the particular camera, right? So it'll, it'll look at that in and of itself there for the camera preview. So what other features are there of this particular class or widget itself? The controller does a lot of things. So we say controller. It has a lot of methods. We can take a picture. I couldn't get that to work. I couldn't figure out how to get that string path. And there's a bunch of different ways, but none of those other ways worked. We could start video recording, add listener. So we could add a listener. So for example, if you're using your phone for a... Um, like a dash cam. So a dash cam is basically having a camera in front of your car. And what if you say, every time my car, my, my phone travels faster than 10 miles an hour, because that's faster than most of the time I run, right? So if it goes faster than 10 miles an hour, go ahead and turn on the video recording, start video recording, right? So it would change the state once the GPS tells you you're moving this fast, then it would start the recording itself. So you can use ad, ad listeners in that type of situation. Okay, 
So that's most of it. I've not gotten the actual taking pictures, where to save them. I haven't gotten that to work and I've looked for it, but maybe we'll figure out that out sometime in the future. All right. I think that's about it. Oh yeah. Cameras, right. If you change that, so I'm going to change it to the front camera and we'll try to run that. And there we go. So that's my webcam and you can actually see yourself and take a selfie from there. But wait a minute, if you look at it, it keeps changing, right? So I'm trying to flip the camera around. So now I'm upright, but I also lost about 70 pounds and um, that's a problem also. So I'll flip it around. That doesn't quite work right. I'll flip it around one more time and now I'm on my side. How are we supposed to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this right here and I'm going to put this widget here instead. Return rotation transition. Turns, always stopped animation. It's going to spin it around. It's going to spin it around clockwise this direction about 90 degrees, all right? And then the child is the camera preview controller. Let's try that. Hopefully this will work. There we go. So now I'm more upright. And if I do twist this around, it'll still make me upright. It's a little, again, I lost a lot of weight here. Here, uh, nah, needs a little work, doesn't it? Okay, so it still needs a little work. How to get the rest moving exactly correctly, I'm not sure, but maybe I'll just put a placeholder right here and we'll keep moving on in the future and hopefully come back to this. But for the next video, why don't we go over Image Picker and we'll go from there. Thanks.